and welcome to this special student-produced edition of Carpe Diem. I'm Amory San Jose. Imagine being 13 again. There wasn't a care in the world for most of us, but Lauren Luce has been through more than most of us will go through in a lifetime. Lauren Luce's faith and determination has triggered an enormous fundraising football camp that is taking strides in pediatric brain tumor research. Brain tumors and spinal tumors and moya moya, and she's awful happy right now, but she really looks for this day and she's anxious to, to talk to you here from me. She's 13 years old and she's growing up with this camp. Lauren Luce has one day in her name in which she doesn't have to worry about her everyday struggles. Marianne Luce, mother of Lauren, explains to us Lauren's condition and how one small idea turned into a touchdown. Lauren has a disease called neurofibromatosis type 1. It's an autosomal dominant genetic disorder that can either be inherited or can be caused by a spontaneous mutation. I was diagnosed with brain cancer and I went to the hospital a lot. And it's a, a neurological disorder and it can vary from person to person. Um, it can be severe, it can be very mild where a person might not even know they have it. But one of the manifestations is that it can cause tumors to grow on the nerves. When Lauren was nine months old, she had the official diagnosis of NF1. And that's when we started seeing a lot of specialists, a lot of doctors going for testing. Um, on one of her MRIs, when she was 22 months old, they found a tumor, actually two tumors, uh, along the optic nerves in her brain. She wasn't really a candidate for radiation because of her age. Um, she started chemotherapy for those brain tumors. She's had a loss of vision in her right eye. She's visually impaired in the left. She has endocrine dysfunction. Um, it's affected her hypothalamus, her pituitary gland. Um, it's damaged all the roots on her teeth. She has no roots on any of her permanent teeth from the chemotherapy. They did a routine scan of her spine and they found a large tumor growing um, on the lower part of her spinal cord and she required surgery for that. Hi. What happened to you? Mm. How are you feeling? Tired. Tired? Having a child with, you know, a serious and life-threatening illness is not anything that you really can prepare yourself for. And in the beginning, you know, when you first find out, you kind of are almost frozen. You know, you want the world to stop and you want to shout out, you know, somebody help us, we, we need help. But then reality sinks in and you realize that you really need to arm yourself with as much information as you can get your hands on. It's like a roller coaster ride. You know, you have these peaks and valleys, times when you feel like you can handle everything, times when you feel like everything's just falling apart. And thankfully, we have a great support system. We have wonderful family and friends and neighbors. And, you know, for those times when you're feeling like you really can't do it, there's people there to, to buoy you up and, and to help you. I feel that they've helped me a lot in the times that were hard for me. I think you know, as you grow and mature and you experience the things and see the things that we've seen, you realize that, you know, everybody has their times, you know, their crosses to bear and their times when things are tough and that really you can't control everything. You know, some things are just out of your control. All you can control is the here and now. And what we try to do is just wake up every day and say we're going to make it a good day. And whether that means we're in the hospital all day, well, we can make it a good day in the hospital. We feel so fortunate that we've been uh, able to take Lauren to the best treatment centers, you know, in the world. What we've learned is, yeah, there's a huge financial strain that comes along with illness. And, you know, luckily my husband has um, a good job, good insurance. But even so, it's, it's not easy. Marianne and John knew they had to do something to help their child. John is an assistant football coach at Lafayette College, so it made sense to incorporate football into the plan to raise money. Well, my family made a website online, and then we were trying to figure out a way how we can help sign to find the cure. Football coaches are like a fraternity. At one point or another, they've all worked together at a different place, and they move around from school to school, and 
you know, they keep those bonds of friendship intact no matter where they go. It's exciting knowing that my parents are doing this, being after me and we're helping. I just wanted to be a brain dentist. The camp is a one-day clinic for high school age football players. Um, and it's a non-contact instructional clinic, so the players are taught by the volunteer college coaches who come that day, and they um, coach at all levels, Division 1A to Division 3. The first year, there wasn't a lot of people because they were just starting, but each year it's gotten bigger and bigger. The first year, we had about 325 players and I think about 55 volunteer coaches. And each year, we've almost doubled our numbers. This past year here in Pennsylvania, we had over 1,750 campers, players, and over 325 volunteer coaches. How you doing, sweetheart? Coach Roos, you know Hey, Joe, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing good. Big day for you. We're all, we're a totally volunteer run organization. We don't have any paid employees. Everyone who works with our organization is a volunteer. And in the beginning, you know, um, it wasn't so easy getting volunteers. You know, we had to ask people and everyone we asked, of course, responded positively and wanted to help. And what's happened is every year, the number of volunteers grows because everyone who came the year before leaves that day feeling like they really made a difference. The money is a combination of things. Um, we charge a, 20, a $30 registration fee for the players. Um, and many of those registrants donate more than the $30 registration fee. Um, we also have private donations, uh, people who just like what we're doing, they like the way that we're doing it, and they want to help the cause. Choices and consequences are always together. They're inseparable. Good choices, you normally get good consequences. We've raised over a million dollars over seven years. Um, I think the first year we raised about 20,000. And I just finished our taxes uh, for the last year and it was 293,000 raised in the last fiscal year. Since no one is paid, we're all volunteers, you know, 90% of that money. 90 cents out of every dollar is going towards our mission of funding pediatric brain tumor research and cancer services and assisting families facing a pediatric cancer diagnosis. As the football camp continues to grow, so does Lauren's heart. After meeting Lauren, it is hard not to be affected by her positive attitude and her smile. She's a very happy child. She has very little anxiety over her illness and I know many people would expect just the opposite. Um, I'm the one who tends to get worked up and she's the one always saying, oh mom, don't worry, it'll be fine, I'll be fine. Parents are supposed to be leading their children and we all know that, but something's happened here and I've heard it from other parents who have been through this experience that somewhere along the line the child has become the leader and we learn to follow her lead. Lauren, Lauren is, um, She's very special. You know, I used to say to her, she would do things like, you know, come up to me or, and she still does, you know, kiss me for no reason or give somebody a hug. She's a hugger, she'll hug anybody. And I used to say, Lauren, where did you come from? And she would say, heaven above. And it, I think it's true. If you would like to get involved with Lauren's First and Goal, visit lawrencefirstandgoal.org.